Thank you, Adam. Um, actually, Adam introduced me to do lectures, um, something I've never heard of before, and went online, looked at it, I was like, wow, that is very, very different. I definitely want to be a part of this. Adam, talk to people, do lectures, get me in. I'm totally here. Um, a little bit of my background, I am a, I'm a chef. Um, pretty straightforward, I cook for a living. Um, and we're, today we're gonna talk about, my lecture is, okay. <laughs> well, I'll jump the gun a little bit here. Um, today we're gonna talk about food and how food is a relationship. Really open-ended topic. Um, we're gonna go about talking about not just relationships between my purveyors, uh, that's very, very common, um, but more of my relationships to social, geographical, um, personal as well, and how I translate that through food and what I do. So we want to talk about terroir. Um, a, <laughs> a common term you hear in, in fine dining, you know, uh, giving a sense of place. Um, so we're going to see a lot of images, um, parts of Oakland, uh, a little bit of my background. I, I am half Thai, half Chinese. Um, my family um, immigrated to Oakland um, from Laos 30 years ago, and pretty much I never left. So I'm a hometown boy, went through all Oakland public schools, lived in West Oakland uh, for 25 years. So I've seen a lot of things go on, seeing the growth of the city, and I'm very, very proud of it. So this is part of West Oakland, very urban, um, big warehouse district, um, graffiti, uh, which I have part of doing some, <laughs> being an urban kid, and that's you know that's part of my personal makeup um, as myself, you know. And this is kind of uh, the cityscape. This is a sense of place. This is photos we're taking. I took myself about a week ago, um, prior to being here today. So this is a neighborhood of West Oakland. I grew up on 25th and Telegraph, not too far from where I live. Um, it looks exactly the same as I remembered it. Um, you know, growing up as a teenager. Um, so graffiti is a big part of me. Um, it was our way, my friends and I, to express ourselves. Um, we pretty much created our own opportunity to to do art, um, to make ourselves heard pretty much to, to speak and a way to communicate to the community without giving an opportunity, giving a microphone or getting invited to talks or whatnot. So what we did was communicate to each other what inspires us and you know, we just threw it on the wall. You know, definitely we, we asked for permission, you know, you know can, you, can we put a piece up? You know, and I think you'd be very happy with it. And what I like most about graffiti, it's very free form. There's no stenciling, it's all done. There's no, you know, outline drawn. It's, you know, spray cans, and you go, you think, your thoughts, and you just throw it up, you know, and it's very, very, very spontaneous. So this is a big part of me. Um, this piece was done by a friend of mine who's Asian, so as you can see, his inspirations with Buddhist, Buddhism, and this is thrown up in West Oakland on shipping containers. Now, there's actually a park of shipping containers with graffiti on. It's kind of like for us younger, well, at least my younger generation now are doing the same. So these are kind of the uh, images that I wanted to share, give you a sense of Oakland, a sense of terroir. Um, this is a very, one of the shipping containers have a display of bees. And I find it perfect because um, it relates to terroir and also cooking, um, honeybees. And there's a steady decline of honeybees. And there's actually a lady, um, Sarah, she lives in Oakland Hills and cultivating these wild bees and making local honey in the city urban atmosphere, uh, which is great, which we use in our restaurant as well. Um, so you get kind of great pictures. And you can see on the two corners of the of the pictures is um, piece of be aware and connected worlds. Um, this was already up. I have I did not approach the artist of doing this. Um, as a chef, I always find food is always on my mind. 
um, and walking in the urban situation, this photo is very, very, I think, provocative and also very symbolic. As you see the honeybee um, over there on the right, and right below it, the shrub is actually a wild quince bush. And it totally symbolizes what I do. It's you know taking something that obviously in the countryside, you can see quince, apples, and whatnot, um, scoped out in the urban community. And this, again, like the message in the corner is like the two connected worlds, um, which, um, which also generates my personal terroir and how I'm going to translate it to cooking. Uh, more symbolism, I just, I just love graffiti and art. This is really funny because this is a warehouse also in West Oakland, with all these plants and just two, two seats, just two benches to sit down as you were like kicking back at some, but you're, you're staring at warehouses. You know, it just, it just speaks like um, town can re, um, exist in the country, kind of, kind of lose yourself. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of cheerleading as well, uh, being a Oaklander. <laughs> um, a lot of things that happened in Oakland um, through the arts um, as well. We have what we call an art member that happens the first Friday every month. I don't know if some of you might be aware of the art member where um, a lot of local artists open their galleries up. It's, this is in the Uptown District, um, a block away from where I grew up originally. And to open the doors, it's a big social gathering, anywhere from 600 to 1,000 people just fill the streets, mingling, um, connecting, sharing ideas, um, showing each other's work, have, um, giving each other stages to provide and inspire each other. Um, at this wall, it's called the Great Wall of Oakland. Um, so every Friday, there's, just, there's a movie projected on this wall, um, which is, you know, it could be a small film that you know, someone's looking for to be produced or to be picked up or whatnot, and it's just, you know, inspired mostly art students. Um, so it's very, very commutative. This is a source of an outlet. Um, these are some of the works. A lot of see are very, very detailed, all done with, with spray cans. And I just, I don't know, I'm just very proud. Just like, I know how much work that takes and how much time and like how much precision um, to do. Is when, I don't know if anyone knows the art of graffiti, there's no erasing involved. You just can't make a mistake in the race. Everything has to be exact. One thing you have to do is correct it with the next step. So some of the, like, the little details of what speaks about the place and how this relates to me and food. And we're going to talk about how all this shapes my two restaurants. Um, my two res I have two restaurants in Oakland, both very different in the spectrum. One is fine dining. One is a rice bowl shop. Um, my cooking background, I'm classically trained, went to culinary school, and worked in some of the finest restaurants in the, in the Bay Area, and also went abroad and cooked at a lot of um, some of the top restaurants in the world. Um, and kind of took that back, and I always eventually wanted to do what's out there in my hometown. Um, you know, I just, it's great to be home, and you know, why cannot a great place that's in France, can, why can't I exist in an urban city like Oakland? You know, it's like, I'm, I'm definitely taking a big risk, opened my first restaurant in 2008. Um, at the height of the, you know, downfall of the economy, and uh, it was tough, but you no, know, pretty much cashing all my credit cards, and you know, I was just gonna go for it, so I was gonna, you know, just go for broke. You know, this is what I believe in, I think this can be done. Um, we opened in 2009. I did, was on my own general contractor for the whole project. Um, put together a team, opened in 2009, and within three months, really unprecedented, caught me by surprise, um, we got our first Michelin star. Um, <laughs> yeah, it didn't come to my mind at all, like this place is gonna be on that, on that level, but uh, it's definitely very um, satisfying, gratifying as well. Now, moving on, um, 
talk more about social terroir. Um, growing up in Oakland, um, a lot of low-income families. Um, there's litter, pollution, um, you know, crime, all that involves. Um, but you know, on top of that, what makes it worse is 30,000. There's 30,000 residents in West Oakland, with 53 liquor stores, no grocery stores, um, which is totally uncalled for and unheard of. But you know, we have to make the best with our uh, with our situation, and a lot of people are starting to recognize it now. And I'm doing a little bit of cheerleading for um, two groups um, there in West Oakland, just trying to change that a little bit. You know, everyone deserves, no matter what financial background you are, deserves to eat good, healthy food, um, not just food in general, but nutritious. So we started, uh, they started urban farming. Um, there's two groups. One's called City Slicker Farms. Um, they pretty much um, farm stands, um, but all the produce is grown in West Oakland. Um, either in empty lots that are left abandoned that the city gave permission for them to, to grow these, or also in backyards of residents in West Oakland, teach the residents how to farm, how to uh, grow vegetables, um, and kind of keep it very, very tight, not just outsourcing and bringing it in. Uh, we wanted more than that to, say, to kind of educate. They also provide cooking classes um, for young children and uh, mothers alike, how to cook nutritiously, not you know, more than so, just pop it in the microwave and, you know, set the timer and let it go. You know, how, do you, how can you provide? Um, this is very important to me because nutrition is the foundation and food is the foundation for everything. Um, you know, you have to nourish the people right and everything kind of blossoms around that. Um, just kind of the mission statement of Sea Slicker Farms, grow affordable, fresh, organically grown produce for West Oakland to create urban farms, backyard gardens, and empower our West Oakland community to grow, sell, and organic fruits and vegetables for the health of community and our environment. So it's very, very closed loop. That's what I love about it. Like it's the vegetables that they grow, it's exclusively for West Oakland residents. Um, no outsiders. Um, they're the one in most in need. Oops. These are the, uh, some of the urban gardens. Um, this is one of them. Um, raised, raised beds. Grow everything from squash, New Zealand spinach, um, radishes, turnips, um, all for harvesting and then sold at the stands. Um, so there's a kind of, kind of sense of bringing like the countryside into the urban, just kind of keeping it there as well. Strawberries, Yaro. Uh, another part of geographic terroir and also social is urban foraging. And I think this is very uh, symbolic of what I do currently um, and ongoing. Um, I think this message is also by artists in West Oakland that sculpture is made by rebar and wire. Um, it's about 40 feet tall. Um, so these are things that we forge for in our urban community. Uh, wood sorrel kind of grows everywhere. Blackberries, juniper, tetragon or New Zealand spinach, rose hips, wild roses. Some of these are in the foothills of Oakland Hills. Some of them are just parked that's across the street from the restaurant. Rosemary, yarrow, crab apples, crimson, let's go on. Ramps and onions, strawberries, arugula berries. And the, this is kind of the end product of my fine dining restaurant at Komi. This is a dish we call Terroir of the Bay. It's a local albacore tuna and all the wild greens that you see that we forage for. So when you eat this dish, it gives you a sense of, a sense of place. Like, you know, people would ask, what are you sourcing ingredients? Like, um, for, you know, the fish is from outside here in the Bay in the Golden Gate, but all the herbs is pretty much across the street. You know, we, we wanted to do more so than just going to the local farmer's market, you know, because a lot of chefs shop there. It's like, how can we distinguish ourselves even 
more. And that was it. And I just had a, um, my wife and I, uh, we got married the same year that Comey opened, and we had our first child three months ago. And thank you. And our finance uh, went to almost like an emotional, personal um, dialogue with myself. And how does home cuisine or high-end cuisine fit into family life? And looking back, it's like it doesn't exist. And uh, I think that's uh, now being a think differently now with the family. You know, where does the child or or family fit into white tablecloths fine dining? There's no room for it. And I think that's. I think that's a, a big problem, and I think that's going to be easily fixed. Um, so I opened a second restaurant. <laughs> so it's, this is more embodies about who I am. Kumi, I want to say it's what I do. I love fine dining, I love cooking, I love the arts. But Hawk Affair is my second place. Um, it's about who I am. This is also located in Oakland. Hawk Affair was, I grew up in the restaurant business. My mom, this is one of my mom's restaurants that I kind of forced her to retire. She's now moved back to Thailand. And growing up now as an adult and having a child, like I miss my past. And I don't understand it much. And I'm understanding my past now through food and what I was being served as a young child uh, in an urban setting. So it's like, oh, you know, that's, I, want, I wanted to share that. And the only way I know how to share it is through food. So I took over mom's, my mom's restaurant. Um, the restaurant's three months old. Did most of the renovation myself. Um, wanted to hire an architect, but come to think of it, you know, the architect doesn't know who I am, doesn't know my background. So I ended up doing all the design work from graphics to, you know, kitchen design and whatnot. That's the facade. That's the interior of Hawk Affair. Um, pretty much I'm bringing my, the outside um, atmosphere, what I grew up in, indoors. Um, I, I didn't want to really encapsulate Oakland and what my experiences are. And Hawker Fair is a restaurant that serves rice bowls. Um, and that's something that I grew up on, you know, and I remember eating, you know, going out, tagging up a wall, coming home, eating a rice bowl, listening to hip hop music. You know, I was like, I wanted to relive that. It was really nostalgic to me and very real and authentic. Um, it's just kind of the atmosphere, very, very communal. Um, keep in mind, this is a very accessible restaurant. Um, I wanted to serve really, really good ingredients, but also make it accessible. Everything at Hawk Affair is under $10. Um, there are some challenges to doing that. You know, um, ingredients aren't cheap. It's so how to balance a sustainable business. <coughs> as long as I make it approachable for everyone. So some of uh, the cooking that gets involved. So we all source um, local sustainable ingredients, um, cooking in our fashion, um, really quick and go. Um, pretty much food is, at the end of the day, no matter it's fine dining or very low end, like you're a food truck, it's, it's nourishment. I think everyone is entitled to um, great nourishment. And this is kind of a general idea of Hawk Affair. A little pork belly, fried egg. And this is one, one of the dishes you probably get at Hawk Affair for $9. It's, you know, um, it's locally raised pork out from Merced, um, rice, fried egg from GV Farms in Petaluma, and pickles. Um, we get a lot of local Asian vegetables now from Sacramento area. A lot of um, Asian families were now started growing vegetables for themselves to eat by also now serving the huge Asian population in Chinatown. Um, usually when you go to farmer's market, you just see your typical tomato, squash, zucchini, but never esoteric um, Asian vegetables. So I'm incorporating that. And people are surprised, like, local cilantro? Really? I'm like, yeah, you know, you're doing it. It can, it can be done. Um, so that's pretty much my, oops, pretty much my, my story. Um, and you know, furthermore, I, that's like I said, the challenge is keeping it sustainable. And I'm starting to, to, I can't do it alone, but this is kind of my personal story. But I'm starting to collaborate with people who have the same vision, like um, to revive a city that you're from that you totally believe in, and also refining your past. Uh, um, someone told me best is, you know, you can't move forward without understanding your past. And uh, I was like, 
that's totally true. And that's what Hawker Ferry embodies, you know, I'm digging back into my past and like celebrating it, you know, and looking at it and hopefully that message will grow on and and uh, so on and so forth. And um, I know, and talk about collaborations, I'm actually collaborating with Adam, who's also, who will hear his talk a little bit, and uh, we're doing a, a beer together for Hawker Fair, um, very uh, Oakland style. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you know, be inspired and uh, um, do look back at your past and, and definitely something will flourish out of it. And I think project it what you believe in and into what you do. You know, it could be food, it could be making films, and um, you know, and I never thought I could do it through food, but I think Parker Fair is like the perfect example of understanding who I am. Like everyone that meets me personally and they go to Hawker Fair, I'm like, okay, I, I, I get you what you're about. So it's almost a, a, a personal identity. But um, yeah, so food is just a powerful thing. Um, you know, to give someone, to cook something, to give someone to put in their mouth and consume, it creates a lot of trust. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just more, much more than nourishment. You know, there's thoughts involved. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my story. <laughs>